Hello, welcome to page 104 of Anatomy Coloring Book, Chambers of the Heart. This is Dr. Stephen Harkins. Let's discuss the chambers and the pathway of oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood, uh, the path that they travel through the body and through the heart. First of all, when blood is when the oxygen in blood is used up, um, it turns blue. The red blood cell carries blood-rich oxygen. It has hemoglobin in it. Hemoglobin, which is rich in iron. Iron. Oxygen attaches to that iron in the hemoglobin. The body uses this oxygen uh, for energy. The cells of your body, the muscles, every cell in your body uses it. When that oxygen is depleted and used by the body, the cell, the red blood cell turns, or the, the blood turns blue as it lacks the color given to it by the oxygen. So we will use red for oxygenated blood and blue for deoxygenated. So all that blood has been used by the body and it comes back to the heart to be pumped to the lungs so that it can get reoxygenated. The deoxygenated blood travels through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the right atrium of the heart. The right atrium. This blood in the right atrium, the right atrium here then contracts and slams this blood into the right ventricle. This blood is still deoxygenated. It still has no oxygen in it. When the right ventricle then contracts, this muscle here, squeezes and contracts and slams this blood into the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. This deoxygenated blood gets pumped into the lungs. Where the lungs are filled with oxygen from breathing and it oxygenates this blood. Then the oxygen reattaches to the hemoglobin in the blood and the blood cell becomes, the blood becomes red again. And the blood, this freshly oxygenated blood, oxygen is now attached to the hemoglobin returns to the heart through the pulmonary veins. It returns to the left ventricle of the heart, freshly oxygenated. The left ventricle here, excuse me, the left atrium. The left atrium then contracts, squeezes, and slams that blood into the left ventricle. which then the left ventricle squeezes and slams that blood into the aorta, the aortic arch, down through the thoracic aorta and up through these arteries for the upper body. And so to the body for use for fresh blood. And from the vena cava, it came from the body. And that is a simplified explanation, but it's not so simple. It's actually, it doesn't occur like that in sequence, like that one, two, three, and four. 
In truth, it's the atria, the right and left atrium, they contract at the same time. They squeeze at the same time, and the right and left ventricles contract at the same time. So let's look at this. Here's a more descriptive explanation. The blood comes into the inferior vena cava. This is deoxygenated. It's already been used. And it needs more, it needs to be refreshed with more oxygen. And through the superior and inferior vena cava. Excuse me, vena cava. The blood travels into the right atrium. This area here. This chamber. This is the first chamber of the heart. Comes filled with deoxygenated blood. The right atrium. At the same time, blood from the lungs, freshly oxygenated blood from the lungs, comes into the pulmonary vein simultaneously. Comes into the left atrium and fills the left atrium with blood. That is signified here. The pulmonary vein becomes filled or fills the left atrium with fresh oxygenated blood from the lungs. These two events happen at the same time. Then the both the left atrium and the right atrium squeeze and contract and send their blood into the right ventricle and left ventricle at the same time. So blood is squeezed into the left ventricle and squeezed into the right ventricle. These ventricles now become filled with blood. These ventricles become filled with blood. The right ventricle becomes filled with deoxygenated blood. And the left ventricle becomes filled with oxygenated blood. both at the same time. Then the ventricles both squeeze and contract. These muscles here squeeze and contract the left ventricle and the right ventricle squeeze and, and contract at the same time. Squeezing their blood, the uh, left the right ventricle squeezes its blood into the pulmonary artery through the pulmonary trunk and then to the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries. While at the same time, the left ventricle contracts and squeezes and sends its blood through the aorta, the ascending aorta, and through the aortic arch and down through the aortic thoracic aorta. The aortic arch, these arteries, the subclavian, brachiocephalic, carotid, and down through 
through the thoracic aorta, both occurring, both contractions occurring at the same time. So this entire ventricular muscle mass, the ventricular, both ventricular muscle masses, the left and the right, squeeze at the same time and send their blood coursing through the pulmonary artery. Here, the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary artery, left and right, and through the aortic arch, the ascending aorta going upward here, and then down through the thoracic aorta. But here's the question. While the ventricles are squeezing, why doesn't the blood go back into the atria? Why doesn't this blood travel back in here? And why doesn't blood travel back into the left atrium? The answer is because there are valves, one-way valves that don't let it happen. In the right ventricle, there are, as a parachute type valve, here are the strings of the parachute right here. It's called the tricuspid valve. It has three cusps, three parachute like cusps here, here, and here. Parachute, they're just like parachutes that are catching air. What happens is when the right ventricle contracts and squeezes inward, the blood, it snaps this parachute shut here and blocks off the atrium, the right atrium so that no blood can get in there and all the blood then has to be diverted to the pulmonary trunk. So imagine these as, as three, as a parachute. Blocking, catching the, catching the blood and blocking and saying no, no blood gets to go in back into the right atrium. In a similar way, and in, in, in a similar way, the left atrium is blocked as well. When the left ventricle begins to squeeze and contract and push all that blood, the left atrium is blocked off by what's called a bicuspid valve. Bi, because it only has two parachutes, so to speak. And so when the left ventricle squeezes, these parachutes slam the door shut on the right or the left atrium and no blood is allowed to pass and all the blood becomes diverted, not here. It's got to turn and go this way. And it, blood is now blocked from coming in, back into the right ventricle. And it forces the blood into the ascending aorta instead of back into the left atrium. So in the right ventricle, that's called the AV tricuspid valve, the atrioventricular tricuspid valve. And the little cords, the parachute cords, are called chordae tendinae, tendinous cords, tendinous cords. And there are little muscles coming off the ventricular walls from the myocardium, and they are called the papillary muscles, the papillary muscles, and they are grabbing on to the chordae tendinae of the parachutes of the tricuspid valve, making sure that it stays firm and shut, and quite possibly pulling it back 
when the contraction is done. The same occurs here. There are chordae tendinae in the bicuspid valve. The atrioventricular bicuspid, bi meaning only two cords, two chordae tendinae, two uh, papillary muscles. The bicuspid valve is also known as the mitral valve, mitral valve. Now, you might ask, what is keeping the blood from falling back into the ventricles now? After the right or the right ventricle squeezes and pushes all its blood into the pulmonary artery, pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries, the lungs, why doesn't that blood simply fall backward and back into the right ventricle? And it is because of this little valve right here. It's like a sort of pocket valve that opens up when the blood comes through, but snaps shut when to prevent blood from coming backward. So blood cannot come backward. The valve might look something like this. One valve sort of maybe on top of each other so that blood, when it tries to fall back, gets trapped in, in this what's called a semilunar valve. So that's called the pulmonary semilunar valve with these flaps that don't allow, that allow blood to rush only one way. There is also an aortic semilunar valve when the left ventricle contracts and sends the blood through the sending aorta, why doesn't the blood fall backward? Same thing. The aortic semilunar valve, luna means moon, so perhaps it's uh, the moon shape of these valves, of these flaps that sort of allow the blood to come through this way, but then slam, the flaps slam shut like that and disallow, and they do not allow the blood to come back. So those are the aortic, that's the aortic semilunar valve. The aortic semilunar valve. And so now we have discussed the chambers of the heart and the valves of the heart. And now you know that it, that it doesn't happen necessarily in a sequential manner. You know, first this, then this then um, this, then this here, no. It's more like this, one and one, two and two. These simultaneously send their blood, atria into the ventricles, and the ventricles simultaneously push their blood um, into their respective areas. Okay, this is page 104 of Anatomy Coloring Book, this is Dr. Stephen Harkins.